Hey guys, welcome back. We'll continue with the book Cracking Codes with Python. And in this video, we are going to write the public key cipher to encrypt and decrypt messages using the private and public key that we generated in the last episode. Let's jump right in. Similar to the ciphers we covered previously, the public key cipher converts characters into numbers and then performs mathematical operations on those numbers to encrypt them. But rather than encrypting individual letters, the public key cipher converts multiple characters into a single integer, which is called a block. And to better understand that, let's actually head over to idle. And similar as to, for example, the Caesar cipher, we're going to have a constant called symbols, which basically contains all the letters of the alphabet, as well as additional characters, for example, a space character, exclamation mark, and period. If we take a look at the number of characters using the land function, we can see it's a total of 66 characters. And of course, we can use the index to have a look at individual characters. For example, at index 0, we have capital A. And at index 30, we would have a lowercase e. Now, in order to generate a block, we are going to create a variable block integer and set it to 0 initially. And then we are basically going to use the index of a certain letter that we want to encrypt. And we're going to take that index and then raise it to increasing powers of the length of our symbols. So that of course is a value of 66. So if you want to encrypt a word such as howdy, we would start by getting the index of the first letter, capital H. So that has an index of 7. So we can take that index 7 and since it's the first letter that we want to encrypt, we would multiply it by 66 raised to the power of 0. And of course any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. So therefore that will evaluate to 7. And we can take this number here and add it to our block integer. So at this point, block integer has a value of 7. And now we are going to continue with the next letters. So the next letter would be O. So again, we are going to get the index for that letter, which is 40. And then we're going to take that index 40, multiply it by 66, now raised to the power of 1. So for each subsequent character, we would increase the power by 1. And then the result will be added to the block integer. So after we have done that, the block integer now has a value of 2647 and we encrypted the first two letters. So let's keep going. We need to encrypt W in the word howdy. So again, we're going to take the index of that symbol W and then multiply it by the length of the symbols now to the power of 2 and we're going to add the result to the block integer. Next up, we are going to encrypt the letter D using the same approach now with a power of 3. And finally, we need to encrypt the letter Y. So we use the same approach now with the power of 4. And now we can have a look at the block integer and we can see this is the number that uniquely identifies the message that we encrypted, so the message howdy. And of course, the longer the message is that we want to encrypt, the larger the number is going to be. But there's a maximum to how large a number can be. And that is determined by the block size that we're working with. In general, the following equation needs to be true. So 2 to the power of the key size needs to be larger than the symbol set size raised to the block size. So for instance, if we use a 1024-bit key and we use a symbol set of 66 characters as we just did before, then the maximum block size is an integer with up to 169 characters because 2 raised to the power of 1024 is greater than 66 raised to the power of 169 but it is not greater than 66 raised to the power of 170. So we need to keep that limit of 169 characters in mind when we work with a symbol set size of 66 characters. So if we want to encrypt a longer message, we basically need to separate that into multiple blocks. So here, for instance, we have a message that we are encrypting and we are basically cutting it off when we reached 169 characters and then we would generate multiple blocks. So here this message would basically be split up in three different block integers, which have a maximum of 169 characters. And to briefly touch on the mathematics of the public key cipher to encrypt or decrypt it, let's have a look at these two equations here. So C represents a ciphertext block integer and M represents a message block integer. And the two numbers here, E and N, make up the public key for encryption and the numbers D and N make up the private key. So typically we would create the encrypted message by raising every block integer, like those that we just calculated in idle, to the E power and modding the result by N. And then by combining all of these different blocks that we generate, we have our complete encrypted message. 
And to do that efficiently, we can use the Python function POW. So to use the function, we would, for instance, pass our block integer, for example, for the word howdy that we just calculated, and then our numbers for the public key, and that generates our ciphertext block integer. And we can use a similar approach to decrypt our message. So let's have a look at how we can decrypt our block integer. This is the block integer we generated before for the word howdy. We also are using our symbols constant. Then we're taking our block integer and we're using integer division to divide that block integer by the size of our symbols. So 66 characters inside of the symbols constant raised to a power of four. And we're raising it to a power of four because we know that the original word howdy is five letters long. And since we start at an index of zero, we would first raise it to a power of four. This returns the number 50. And if we then have a look at the index in the symbols constant at position 50, we get back Y, so the last letter in our word. Next up, we need to update our block integer by taking that block integer here and then calling modulo 66 raised to the fourth power and storing that back in block integer. So we are updating the value for block integer. So we get this updated number. And then with this updated block integer value, we repeat the same steps again. So basically we perform this operation. We take the block integer, we use integer division, taking the length of the symbols raised to the third power now, because we're interested in the fourth character in our word. And that gives us back D, so the second to last character. And we would repeat those steps until we decrypted our entire message. And there are a couple of reasons why we can't hack the public key cipher, at least not with the method we learned about so far. The first one is that a brute force attack won't work because there are just too many possible keys to check. We also can't use a dictionary attack, as we could use with a substitution cipher, for instance, because the keys that we are using are based on numbers, not on words. We also can't use a word pattern attack because the same plain text word can be encrypted differently depending on where in the block it appears. And we also can't use frequency analysis, which we used with the substitution cipher, because the encrypted blocks represent several characters. So rather than a substitution cipher, we basically matched one character to one other character. Here we have a block that represents multiple characters. So let's open up idle and let's write our public key cipher program. So as before, we can generate a new file and save it as public key cipher.py. And we actually need to make sure that we save that file that we create inside of the same folder where we generated our private and public key before. So to start out, we are going to import our sys module and the math module. Then we're also defining our symbols constant, just as we did before in idle. And then we define our main function. Here we are starting out by specifying a file name. That's going to be the file that we are going to write to or read from. And then we also specify our mode, so whether we want to encrypt or decrypt a message. And if we selected the mode encrypt to encrypt a message, then our message is specified here. And we specify also the public key file name that we created in the last episode. And we're also printing out which file we are writing to as we are encrypting the message. And then we call the function encrypt and write to file, passing the file name, the public key file name and the message to that function and storing the return value back in encrypted text. And then at the end, we are printing out the encrypted text. If instead we are decrypting a message, we need to use our private key. And therefore we are specifying the name of our private key file that we're going to use. And then we are printing out that we are reading from the file and decrypting it. Here we are calling the function read from file and decrypt, passing the file name and the private key to it and storing the return value in decrypted text. And then we are printing out the decrypted text. And to start out, just as we did before in idle, we need to convert our string message to a list of block integers. So the function get blocks from text takes the message and also the block size. And then we are using a for loop to loop through all the different characters in our message. And if there's any character that is not contained in our symbols constant, then we are printing out an error message that we cannot encrypt that particular character and we are quitting our program. Otherwise, we have our blocks integer list that we define here. And then we are starting out by creating our first block integer by using the for loop here, using the range function, starting with an index of zero up to the length of the message. And we're going to separate that into the respective block size because we might have to use multiple blocks. We're then going to calculate the block integer for the particular block of text. Of course, we're going to set the block integer to zero initially for each individual block. And then we basically repeat the same step we did before in idle. 
So we are going to get the specific index for the character of the message we are looking in. So for the word howdy before we started with the index for capital H, which was seven. Then we're going to multiply that by the length of the symbols raised to the respective power. And we're going to keep looping until we reach the maximum block size. And then we're going to append those integers that are generated, those different blocks, to our block ins list. And finally, we're going to return that. Of course, we also need to be able to decrypt the block text. So therefore, we are defining the function get text from blocks, which accepts the blocks integers we generated before, the message length and the block size. And this function then converts the list of block integers to the original message string. So here we start out by defining an empty list message. And then we are looping over each individual block inside of our block ends variable. And we want to get out the individual messages for each individual block. So therefore we specify this as an empty list. And again, we are using the same principle that we covered before in idle, using the block integer and then using integer division to divide the block integer value here by the length of the symbols raised to a certain power i. And as we know from before, we need to start basically at the end. So therefore our range function here starts at the value of the block size minus one. And then on each iteration, we are basically decreasing the value of i by one. So in our example before with howdy, we started with an index of four, then continued with three, two, and so on and so forth. And then of course, to update the block integer, as before, we need to use the modular operator passing the length of symbols raised to the power to it. And then we are going to take that value of the block integer and we are going to use it as an index to the symbols to get the actual character. And then we're going to insert that to our block message. And by the end, we are going to join all the individual characters in our message list together. So we get a string and then we're going to return that to get back the original message string. And then of course we need to use those mathematical functions that we briefly looked at before to encrypt or decrypt our messages. So here to encrypt the message, we need the message, the key and the block size. And then we define a list encrypted blocks, which is empty initially. And we need to use a public key that we specified in the last video. And if you think back, the public key, so as a private key, consists of two different numbers that are stored in a tuple. So therefore we are extracting those different numbers N and E from the key and then we're looping over each individual block and we're using the power function we briefly covered before passing the block as well as the public key as arguments to POW and we're going to append that to our encrypted block list. And we of course keep doing that for each individual block and by the end we are going to return the encrypted blocks. Now to decrypt our message we need to now the encrypted blocks, the message length, the key and the block size and to decrypt a message, we are going to use a private key. So similar to the encrypt message function, we specify a list decrypted blocks that is empty initially, and we need to extract our private key from the key tuple, so stored in N and D, and then we are looping over each block. And again, we are using the POW function, passing the block as well as our private key as arguments. And then we are going to append that to decrypted blocks. And to actually get our decrypted message, we are then going to call our function get text from blocks that we covered before, passing the decrypted blocks that we appended here, the message length and the block size as arguments to it. And of course, we need to be able to read our private and public key. Therefore, we have the function read key files, and we're simply going to open that specific key file, read it and then close it. And then we're going to call split on it to split out the different parts of our key. So the key size and and then the E or D value. And we're going to return that as a tuple. And finally, we have our encrypt and write to file function, which accepts the message file name, key file name, message, and then the block size with a default value of none. And this function is using a key from a key file, then encrypts the message and saves it to a file, and then returns the encrypted message string. And that, of course, is a function which we use here when we encrypt a message inside of our main function. So this function basically builds on top of the other functions. So here we are going to read the file name, check whether the block size is none. And if it is, then we're going to calculate the block size. We're also going to check that the key size is large enough for the block size. And then we're going to encrypt the message by calling the encrypt message function from before, passing the message, the public key and the block size as arguments to it and storing that in encrypted blocks. And then we're going to convert the large integer values to one string value. And finally, we're going to write out the encrypted string to the output file. And by the end, of course, we are going to return encrypted content. 
And finally, we have our read from file and decrypt function, which of course we use inside of our main function to decrypt a message. We accept the message file name and the key file name as arguments. And then we are going to extract the key size as well as the private key from our key file name. And we're going to read in the message length and then the encrypted message from the file by using the file function, reading the file, using the split function here on the content to extract the message length, the block size and the encrypted message. And then we're going to turn the message length and also the block size from a string into an integer. We need to verify that the key size is large enough for the block size. And then we're going to convert the encrypted message into large integer values. So for that, we are defining an empty list encrypted blocks. And then for each block, we're going to append the block turned into an integer to our encrypted blocks list. And then finally, we are going to call our decrypt message function from before, passing the encrypted blocks, the message length, our private key and the block size as arguments to it. So let's see our program in action. We can head over and run our program. And so to encrypt the message, we can see we get this back. So here we have two separate blocks, which are separated by a comma. And here at the very beginning, we have the value 258, which represents the original message length. And then after the underscore, we have 169, which represents the block size. In this video, the RSR cipher was greatly simplified, but it's still a cipher that is used in real world encryption. There's no video on hacking the public key cipher because there's no easy way to break that cipher. And in fact, we have made it to the end of this series. So congratulations for making it that far and feel free to subscribe to the channel for new videos.